Today, I want to read it to you. It's very difficult to be humble if you're always successful. Think about it. It's very difficult to be humble if you're always successful. So God chastises us with failure, so to speak, at times, in order to humble us, to keep us in a state of humility. And then it quotes from Paul, talks about his thorn in the flesh. Our tests are not here to destroy us. Our tests are here to get rid of that horseshoe mentality or that knife blade mentality. God's taking that $5 investment and making a $250,000 profit because he's building something in us that can't happen any other way except through manipulation and probing and pronging and beating and being slammed. Because during that process, something wonderful is taking place. God has something so special for us. I want everybody to stand. But every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. I just want to ask some, some questions. My first question, but nobody looking around. How many in here would say, Pastor, I feel like I've been manipulated, beaten, drugged through the fire, hammered, and it hurts. But I today realize that God's using this process to make me more valuable. Would you just raise that hand? I, I, I will pray with you. Touch him, Lord. Touch him right now. Lord, is there being hammered? Is there being drugged through the fire? Is there being beat on? Lord, touch them. Let them feel your anointing. Let them feel your power, your presence. And even though, like the sign said, teachers are quiet during the test, let them know that you're still there watching. You're in the shadows. You're paying close attention. You're never ceasing to be there. I'm going to ask a hard question now, so when every eye closed, every head bowed, I'm asking this question because I'm going to pray for you. But nobody looking around. Is there anybody here that would raise their hand and say, you know, Pastor, things have been tough. And I've even considered just giving up. It's getting hard. And I need God's touch. If you raise that hand, touch the Lord. Touch the Lord. Touch the Lord. We're going to pray for you right now. Lord, these folks have raised their hands. Let them know that they are close to you, closer than they've ever been, because the Bible says God is close to those that have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Bless them, Lord, abundantly bless them. Let them see some precious fruit come forth in their life. Let them see your power and your anointing. Let them see that your hand is there to guide them and that you're working miracles in their midst. I ask you right now, Father, to minister to each and every one of them. Let them know that it's too soon to quit, that you're there, and that you're going to hold them. Now, if anybody has anything to pray for, you got other things you want to pray for, you got other things you want to talk to God about, these altars are open. These altars are open. Come on and pray. Come on and pray. Come talk to the Master. God is here in a real way. God is here and He's working in our midst. God, we trust you. We look to you. We know, God, that nothing is impossible for you. Lord, minister God in the way that only you can. Lord, you're awesome. You're powerful. 
We know, God, that you've got this. We know, Lord, that you've got this, Lord. We know, God, that your hand is strong and mighty and upon us. Lord, we trust you. Although I don't understand it, I trust you, Lord. Although I can't see the outcome, I trust you, Lord. Although I don't even see your hand moving, I trust you, Lord, because I know your timing is impeccable. I know, Lord, there's nothing going to come our way that you cannot handle. Lord, I thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you have not designed us to quit. You have not designed us to fail. You have designed us to excel, to go forward. You've designed us to, to, to have power and anointing. You have done something special in us, Lord, that the world cannot do and the world cannot give. And also the world cannot take away. We cannot resign to believing that the world has gotten the best of us. We win. We win. We win. We will succeed. We will move forward. We thank you, God. We trust you for all that you do for us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, you're a powerful God. There's none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Lord, I'm looking, and I believe it. Lord, I may not see it, but I know you're there. Lord, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I trust you for that, Lord. I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. One of the questions on Tuesday night was, what's the difference between faith and hope? And of course, one of the best explanations is, faith is believing there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and hope is, knowing, hope is expecting God to be the train. God's got this. Amen. God's got this. Will the elder brother Baker 